Hey Van Life, here's the video Bob. Uh, we did the first video all about this 2010 Horton Ambulance. It's an international 4300 Durastar uh, front end. You can go back and watch the video all about the ambulance. So the whole idea is we're going to be turning this into a camper and hauler to haul our trailer and that we can sleep in it when we go on these trips. It's a chilly cold day here in December in Las Vegas. It does get cold here. Uh, it's my first year living here and super hot summer and a little bit of a chilly winter. We actually rained yesterday, so that's pretty crazy. And that's kind of, you know, taking us into some of the things we're going to be doing with this rig because I don't have to, you, you know, it, it, I'm going to concentrate on not just the extreme heat, but also cold. And you'll see a lot of videos out there, van life, of diesel heaters, electric heaters, uh, propane heaters, butane. Um, using solar and all these different things. Uh, so we're gonna explore a lot of that and we're gonna start converting this thing into a camper. So the things that you need to have in order to be a qualified RV is obviously a sink with running water. And uh, we wanna have a toilet in there and we're gonna have a bed because the entire purpose of this vehicle is that I got a place to sleep, I got a place to poop, <laughs> and I got a place to wash my hands and make something to eat. So we'll be adding a refrigerator, a microwave, and all these other things. So let's get to it. We've already been working on it for the last couple of days, and, and I was thinking, why aren't, why aren't I filming this? So uh, we're going to be making a whole new series for this. I'll make a separate playlist just for this for my van lifers, because there's a lot of people that maybe, uh, you know, for my regular viewers, I have, you know, over 100,000 subscribers that's been watching us, and, you know, we do custom movie cars and reviews, and we talk about all kinds of things. This is going to be a whole different offshoot. So this is going to be just for you guys, the van lifers. All right, this big ass trailer over here is a 32 foot car hauler. I'm going to be pulling that with this. I normally pull that with my Ford Excursion, which has the 7.3 liter turbo diesel. Now this is an international 4300 Durastar. It can tow like 60,000 pounds. So I'm not worried about the truck being able to pull this but there's no hitch on this thing. Now the uh, frame of the truck, you know, ends way back here. They scabbed onto it to put this little bumper assembly on here. So we're gonna have to do a little work to, we may have to remove this bumper, but I need to get some custom welding done in order to put on a hitch. I wanna put a 20,000 pound hitch on here because I'm typically hauling as much as 10,000 pounds in this thing. And that's gonna be the whole point of this. So that when I travel back and forth from Las Vegas to Dallas, where I have my car shop, um, I'll be able to sleep in between there without having to get a hotel. That was the plan, right? Because I've used other vehicles and I need something strong enough uh, to tow. And that's probably why you're watching this video because you too have discovered that RVs are crap and you wanna do some stealth camping. So a lot of people will use Sprinter vans, they'll use Ford E350s, they'll use the Nissans, they'll use uh, box trucks, but RVs have a stigma. The stigma is, first of all, they're pieces of crap. They fall apart. They're made out of balsa wood. They leak. They have all kinds of problems. They don't have a lot of power and they're just crap. And by the way, if you park an RV somewhere, people know it's an RV and then they want to run you off. If somebody sees an ambulance, they're not going to try to run it off usually, especially if it's running with like the lights on. Okay. And that's probably why you two have chosen what I'm trying to do is to build a stealth camper out of an ambulance. This storage compartment here, I think is gonna be the perfect bathroom. It's exactly the, the right size. I've tried putting a stool in here. You can sit without your knees hitting the wall. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but I wanna be able to put a bathroom in without having a toilet out in the open. And I, I'm gonna build a custom door on the other side of here. So also this floor is slightly lower than the floor inside, which is about here, which is perfect because I've ordered a custom black tank that is shallow and it's gonna fit right in here. And then we're gonna put a subfloor on top of it. We're gonna have the tank vent forward out this way towards the back wheels. And then the valve, it's gonna turn down and point straight down. So you'll be able to access the drain right here. Now, on this side, when I show you the inside is where the uh, bed and bench will be. And that lifts up and underneath here will be the tank. And I wanna put the fresh water tank here because it'll be close to the toilet where it can feed where in this little cavity will be the pump and some of the other piping but I'll be able to put a filler here which I think I might have had right here let me see here we go so I, I bought this little fresh water filler so the plan is to put 
the tank sitting in this area and then somewhere around here I will go right through the wall put this fresh filler in and I'll be able to fill my fresh water right here on the same side where I'm doing the rest of my fluids and I won't have to get up underneath the bed and, and that'll be the access to the fresh water. Also on the other side of there will be <laughs> this little rinky dink pump. I bought this off of eBay and I was expecting a full size RV pump and this little bitty thing showed up. That's what happens when you buy cheap. But this thing actually puts out quite a bit of water. I'm gonna try this thing out and I think it might work. All I've gotta do is supply a little hand washing sink and supply the toilet with a little bit of water um, and I think it's going to work fine. I don't need, I don't need a lot of water. I'm not going to be, you know, washing clothes, washing dishes, taking showers. We're not going to do showers in this thing because I'm not going to stay in it more than maybe a night. It'll be fine. Lots of storage and access on this side. I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. This is about the size of, it's a pretty big thing. I mean, you can get up in there and stand in there. I'm probably just gonna put some shelves or something. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this. And there's actually access through here. See, this is normally where the oxygen tanks would go. They could reach through a little porthole there and turn the oxygen on and off. And, you know, I, I considered possibly putting propane in here because with propane, I can have propane powered hot water heater, which we're gonna talk about here shortly, or uh, a propane stove um, and, other things like a propane refrigerator, but I, I don't think I'm really going to need any of those things. I'll tell you why, because the way I'm going to use this, when it's here, I'll just plug this whole unit in. When I get where I'm going, I'm going to plug it in. And in between there, it's just going to be running. So I don't think I'm going to need a generator. I'm going to be basically having the engine running the entire time. Now inside of this bay um, was electrical and other things. Uh, there was a, a shroud here that I took off. Here is their vacuum pump that's used for the uh, medevac system. Then this is just a little breaker sy system. And there was the standard Vanner 1050 watt inverter charger. Almost every single ambulance that I've seen, at least of this era, had a thousand watt Vanner inverter system. They're really expensive, they're pure sine wave, but they only put out a thousand watts. Now this one was taken out, but I have a 3000 watt Duracell it's at my shop that I bought and it's been sitting in a box for a while. Saw great reviews of this thing. I think they sold it through Pep Boys and a few other places. You can get it online. You know, the Duracell slapped their name on it, but it's a 3000 watt modified sine wave. And I think it's gonna work just great. Now I'm gonna mount it. I'm probably gonna have to put it on this back wall because it's much bigger. I don't know if it'll fit right here, it might. But 3000 watts is gonna give me enough power to run anything I want. So if I wanna run like an electric heater that's 1500 watts, I still have a surplus of power. I'll easily be able to run a full-size microwave. Uh, refrigerator only uses a couple hundred watts. So I'm gonna have an excess of power. And that's really what I want. It's better to have too much than not enough. I will add some extra batteries in here as well, but I'm not gonna be going off grid. I don't think I'm gonna bother with doing solar and off grid stuff on here, not just yet. We may do that in the future, and I know a lot of you wanna tune into that. And there's a gazillion channels of everybody who has turned their damn van into an off grid thing. But you know, I'm not gonna live in this thing. I'm just gonna live in it for a day or two. So for some of you out there who have a house and you're not going to live in your van down by the river, um, this might be a build for you to keep an eye on. This other little storage over here, this is just a great storage. I could put anything in here. I don't know what I'm gonna put in here, but I know that, I mean, look at the size of this box. It is amazing. You know, going back to this, uh, this thing over here, you know what I thought about sticking in here? Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, if you're a fan of Harbor Freight like I am, I love Harbor Freight, and I have their big Icon Series toolbox, and they sell a little tag-on box that you can mount on the side of it. They also have the U.S. General one as well. The U.S. General one is under 300 bucks. The, the uh, Icon one is over 1000 bucks because it's really good quality. But it's a little small, like, chest of drawers, and I thought that would be great to fit in here as a toolbox. I just don't know if I'm going to really need that many tools to go with me. I mean, you never know what you're going to need. But what a great thing, right? I could mount that right in here and have a chest of drawers toolbox that's mounted with uh, quality stuff. And, and I could put all kinds of things in there. One of the great things about one of these newer style, uh, like this Horton, being a 2010, has a central locking system. Now I can individually with a key lock every one of these locks, but from inside I can hit the lock and all of these 
uh, cabinets automatically lock and unlock, which is the greatest thing ever, which is why I decided to go with this particular box. You know, if you're a fan of my channel, and if you watch my other videos, I did a video where uh, right before this one, I bought a 1999 wheeled coach uh, van cutaway, which was a type three, much smaller unit, but it was older, it was 20 years older. Great, great amulets, right? And great for the price. However, it didn't have the extra things that this one does. This has the airbag kneeling up and down, has the central locking system, and it has this huge truck front. Crazy enough, this thing doesn't have backup cameras. Being a 2010, you would have thought it did. I found this system, which I could put a link to in the video description if I can find it, but this one in particular is really cool. Uh, this is a four camera system where you could just hit one, two, three, and four and switch between the four cameras. Why four? I'll tell you, I'm gonna have one mounted up high in the back that's gonna shine down on the whole area so that when I'm backing up, I can see behind me. I wanna have another one though that's right at the hitch, right at the ball, so that when I'm backing up to the trailer, I can see exactly where the ball is because you might be able to see up high and get a good idea of where it is but when you're trying to line that ball up and you're playing that game of jumping in and out jumping in and out when you're by yourself trying to get that perfect little inch to drop the thing with a trailer like this that weighs like 5,000 pounds you can't just like kick it and get it to go into place you have to get it perfect I'm also going to put a camera right on the very front down here so that when I'm pulling up uh, parking to something if I'm trying to get extra close and I want to squeeze in every inch or I'm, maybe I'm going to go over drive over something I want to be able to see what's ahead of me where I can't see over the front of the cab and then the other fourth camera I'm going to mount on the other side of the like maybe on the fender or something that way to get my blind spot and and also this area when I'm pulling up next to a curb or if somebody's driving next to me and I can't see them in the mirror for some reason I'll be able to have all four of those cameras here on screen or I can quickly just choose the one that I want so that's going to be kind of a wiring nightmare because I'm going to have to run wires under the vehicle over the side in the front everywhere but this is something that we're going to do on one of our next videos nice wide entrance on this thing however it's a bit of a high jump i mean even for me i'm like six two almost it's just that's that's kind of almost my knee so i've ordered one of the powered automatic RV steps that automatically comes out. We're gonna weld it or bolt it onto the bottom of this with a trigger so that when you open the door, the little step will pop out, make it just a little easier to get in. Um, I may add on like another handrail right here, but this is the handrail designed to use to get in. But you know, it's, it's not that far, but it's just a little bit of a jump. And uh, listen, I'm 47 now, had some motorcycle wrecks, this knee's a little crunchy. I don't like leaping down there. <laughs> so I wanna put myself a nice little step. So if uh, that's something that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe because we're gonna be doing that on a video. I'm just waiting, it, waiting for it to arrive. All right, let's go on inside this thing and check it out. When you start ripping these things apart, you realize what makes an ambulance so much greater than an RV or a box truck. You know, I have a Sprinter, I have a, uh, Sprinter Dually 3500 high top, but it's just a tin can. I mean, the amount of work you'd have to go through to try to insulate that thing and build it up the way an ambulance is. Look at these aluminum beams. Look at the construction of this thing. We showed in the previous video how you can roll this thing like dice and it doesn't do anything to it. And it's because of the cage. Look how close together these beams are. They're all welded together. Look at this insulation. And they use an insulation that's designed that it won't mold uh, it won't corrode, won't rust. So none of this is ever going to rust or mold or corrode. It's antimicrobial. It resists um, water buildup. You know, they epoxy coat it uh, to protect it. It's all pre-wired with electrical. I mean, we have AC electrical wires that run through here, plus 12 volt wires that also ground. Uh, the, one of the reasons we took this out was the seat belts were bolted in in a way that we had, in order to remove them, we had to pull this wall out. And also I wanted to move this electrical outlet, which was down here. And I wanted to move it because this is where the bed is gonna be. And I realized, well, it comes this way. I don't even need to fish it through. I can just put the plug right here uh, and I can put a little shelf here and this will be a place I can put my phone and plug in, you know, because this is where the bed is going to be. Now this is 75 inches, so I can stretch out on this all the way and 
I, you know, like I said, I'm a full size guy. I mean, I'm almost hitting the ceiling. So what we've done is I'm going to show you in just a minute. We've taken out the bench seat and we've made an extended piece of wood and I ordered a custom 30 inch mattress. I'm going to show you in just a second. Now underneath here was just a storage area. The wheel well is directly above here. So in this particular area, as I mentioned before, this is where my fresh water tank is going to be. I custom ordered, well, that wasn't custom. I just searched uh, through all the different water tanks that were available till I found one that just happened to be this exact size. And it's literally almost the exact size to fit in here, except for a little bit of space for the, uh, uh, for the water inlets and outlets. So there's going to be a fresh water tank that's going to sit on top of this wheel well. And then my fresh water infill will be on the other side of that wall and go right in. Then down in this little cavity area is where I'll put maybe the pump um, and any other piping, some shutoff valves and things like that. So if there's a problem and that will feed directly into right here where the toilet will be into the bathroom. Now I'm either going to try to figure out how to run a hose, like a PEX line all the way up and over the ceiling and back down to where the sink is going to be over here, where I'll show you just a second. Uh, or I'll have to run it under the vehicle. The problem with running it under the vehicle is if I stop in somewhere like Flagstaff and it's in the wintertime and it's 16 degrees, that pipe's going to freeze and I won't be able to get any water and that's going to suck. <laughs> so I got to figure out the best way to do it. The best way to do it, I mean, obviously, but I, I would have to, you know, drill through these, these, these massive beams, run a hose up. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Okay, this little area here is where I want to put the sink, which kind of sucks because all my water is going to be over there, but there's really just not a place to put the sink, really. I mean, at least not a convenient place because, you know, I can't mount it on this wall or whatever because I'm going to cut this wall out and make a door. So this was a sink that I custom ordered. I say custom. I just searched until I found the right size sink. But this is a cool little basin. And the, what you'll notice is it's an above the counter. And the reason for that was there just wasn't going to be enough room to have this sink down. But I do have access with the way this is designed. And I may cut myself another lid here uh, so that I don't have this clear lid to cover up where the piping will go. So this is a Corian countertop. I'm going to drill a hole right there and right there. And then I'm just going to glue this thing down. And then the, the fixtures will kind of hold it into place as well. And I'll caulk it. And it just sits right there perfectly. Uh, I want to say that um, IKEA, IKEA has the greatest faucets. If you don't shop at IKEA, this this cool little faucet was only like 50 bucks. I've been getting a lot of my faucets from there. They're high quality. It's brushed uh, stainless steel, and this is going to work perfectly here, right? Nice little gooseneck situation, and this will give me the water. Okay. Another great thing from Ikea that they sell is these little brushes with this little suction cups. You can just like, it's great. Okay, now here's the next thing we're going to do. Check this out. For hot water, my plan was to use this. Now this is a really vintage new old stock insincorator. They don't look like this anymore. This thing's easily 20, 30 years old, but I got it on eBay for like 60 bucks. But these are made to put under your countertop so that you can get instant hot water for making a cup of soup or a cup of coffee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this on the other side with some valves so that it'll give me just enough hot water to wash my hands or clean a plate, something like that. But this is this has to be upright and I'm going to put it in that cabinet on the other side. So what's going to happen is rather than having a P trap, this is going to go down, make a right angle. It's going to go into this cabinet and we'll figure out the draining. We're going to probably have that go under the vehicle to the black tank over there, but uh, we're going to have to feed a fresh water line from that pump and from the fresh tank under the vehicle, I guess, up into the backside of this cabinet where that storage is, where I'll have this hot water and it will feed this. It's a very low pressure system. So the water's just going to trickle out. It's not going to goosh out like it does in your sink uh, at home. But if I can just get some warm water, like right now today, it's probably 40 degrees outside. It's pretty chilly. And it, washing your hands, it would be cold. You know, you wake up, you want to wash your hands, whatever. You want to wash a plate. It's really hard to wash cheese off a fork with cold water. But with piping hot water, plus, by the way, you can adjust the temperature on this thing. It's made to put out boiling water. I'm going to turn it down so it just puts out a not as a hot of water. And um, 
you know, it was the cheapest solution I could find because all the other water heaters basically depend on either having a propane system where you have to wait for it to kind of heat up as an instant hot or a lot of the electrical instant hot ones that go into your house. Those are like 3000 Watts. This thing is only 700 Watts, right? So, and it only has to heat up a cup of water. All I need is a cup of boiling hot water to mix with my ice cold water and it'll give me warm water that I can wash my hands and it'll be perfectly fine. It's just me in here. That's all I got to do. All right, this little area here is a jump seat. We talked about this. This is where a technician would sit and maybe work on a patient, whatever. This is where I'm going to put my refrigerator and the microwave. The refrigerator is just going to sit here. We're going to use a couple of angle brackets to clamp it down. And then I'm going to put the microwave up on top of it. And I'm just going to leave these padded areas here. There's actually a side restraint airbag curtain that comes out right here. I'm going to leave that there. If I ever get in a wreck, it'll save my microwave. Um, so we're going to mount the thing here. The fridge is going to stick out just a little bit, but the feet will still be planted. So it'll be fine. Um, it's just a regular fridge I got from Home Depot, a little mini fridge, 150 bucks. They only use a couple hundred watts. It's not going to use much power. What I'm going to do though, is since all the electrical is going to be under this countertop in that cabinet, I'm going to drill right through the wall and I'm going to put a outlet right down here and I'll be able to plug in the fridge and the microwave right there. And I'll have full power uh, coming off of the inverter to right here. And hopefully the original controls for that inverter will uh, work with the old Vanner system. If it doesn't, I'll have to drill another hole and put the toggle switch to operate the power on for the inverter, but I think it's gonna work. Okay, this jump seat. We had talked about taking the jump seat out, putting the refrigerator here, which is a great place to put it. And I've seen people do it because underneath this is some of the air conditioning things and the vents, but this tilts forward so that you can access that. And that would be kind of a pain if the fridge was in there. The other thing is I need a seat, right? So I thought I'm gonna leave the seat in here in case I ever have somebody ride with me or it's a place that I can sit. And there's really not a table uh, to sit and eat, except, you know, maybe right here. Um, and if I put the fridge here, it would consume all the space. I'd have to reach back behind here. It'd be kind of a pain in the ass. So I've ordered a custom stainless steel uh, wall mounted table. It's going to mount here about this size and it'll fold up like that. And I'll have a stainless steel table that folds up right here that I can eat. I can think about this. If I have the fridge here and the microwave here, I can reach in the fridge, grab my bread, whatever, make a sandwich on this little area, right? Put in, I have access to everything and then I can sit down and eat and then I can fold this away uh, when I'm not using it. And this is a place that somebody else can hang out because you may not want to be just sitting on the bed all the time. Now, I know some of you are going to say, well, where are you going to put the TV? I, I don't think I'm going to put a TV in here because if I can't have a big TV, I don't want a TV. <laughs> so I'll probably just watch my phone or my iPad or something like that. I, you know, I'm not going to be sitting around here watching TV. Like I said, I'm not going to live in the van. I just need a place to sleep. I need to be able to eat. I need to be able to go to the bathroom and I need to be able to go to sleep. All right, one thing that sucks about this particular rig being a type one, which means that the box is mounted onto the truck. There's no pass through that goes from the box to the truck, which means I got to get out of the truck, lock the doors of the truck, come around here, get in, lock all these doors, and I don't have access to the cab, <sighs> which means on a cold morning, I got to get out of this thing and go in there and get that it's gonna that's gonna suck but what we're gonna do to kind of handle that situation is we're gonna put in a uh, remote start now not a traditional remote start like you'd put on your car because those have an automatic 15 minute shutoff we're gonna do something a little bit different we're gonna just tap off of the ignition accessory system just as the key would work and we're gonna put another one inside so it'll be kind of hidden in there and you'll be able to go in turn on the accessory uh, ignition press a button and start the vehicle. So if I decide it's getting too hot or it's the weather's neutral, I can turn the vehicle off, get in there. But then maybe in the middle of the night, I wake up and I need to start it or whatever. I can do it from inside the truck. We thought of everything. We're inside one of my unfinished workshops right here. This is uh, part of uh, the warehouse at my new property. We're gonna epoxy this floor. We're gonna put a garage door right here. Uh, a lot of things are happening here, but right now it makes a good workshop because it's got a heater in it and it's nicely air conditioned and, and heated. 
This silver piece of wood is what I'm gonna to use to hold the bed. So this is the custom 30 inch, uh, it's 30 inches wide, 75 inches long, and 10 inches thick. It was about 400 bucks for this, but this is a firm foam and gel mattress like the one I sleep on in my house. I didn't wanna compromise that. So I really needed to have a really good mattress so I can get a good night's sleep, especially if I'm gonna be in a truck that's running, vibrating. I wanted more than just six inches of bedroll. So in order to extend that out from where this little bench was, you can see where the bench was, right? So we had to extend it out a little bit. I went and bought some fine plywood. Plywood is like a hundred bucks a sheet right now. So this plywood is, uh, I forget what kind it was, it's sick. It was expensive. We cut it to size. Uh, I used my new Milwaukee router system and I just did a video about Milwaukee lights. And I gotta say this right here is an awesome system because this is a cordless Milwaukee router with a cordless Milwaukee vacuum. You hook this up together, no mess, right? You can router this thing out and doesn't make a mess. What an amazing system that is. Uh, if you don't have that, you need to get that. So, but we routed the edges because I didn't want there to be any sharp corners, you know, you're coming in late at night, you got your, you know, shoes and pants off. You certainly don't want to be scraping your leg, climbing out of bed on a sharp thing, getting a splinter in your thigh, that would suck. So we routed it. Now the paint's still wet, so I can't really show you, but basically we just cut this piece of plywood, three quarter plywood decking. And then I put, I had to put a ledge on there to keep the mattress from sliding off because otherwise you'd turn and the mattress would go flying off. So I put a ledge, but I didn't want it to go all the way up because when you sit, this thing is gonna compress and then it, your, your, your leg will be hitting it. So I only wanted to go up a few inches like that, just enough to hold it in so that when you sit on the edge, you're not sitting on the piece of wood. We're also gonna add some dowels here. It's around here somewhere. Uh, we got a two inch wooden dowel. We're gonna put three legs on there and this will have the hinge on it just like the bench did, right? So uh, the hinge is back there. It's a big uh, piano hinge. That hinge will allow you to lift this whole thing up and you'll be able to access that fresh water tank and all the other things that I'm gonna put under there when and if you need to get under there. I decided to paint it silver instead of gray or natural wood because I wanted to keep the industrial look of the ambulance. You know, everything in there is either stainless steel or it's black rubber, or it's the, the, the gray material like that. And I like that industrial look. My 1990 Prevo bus that I have that I've done on videos on this channel, you can also check out Video Bob's RV and Bus Channel, um, you know, has that same color material in there. And, uh, you know, not judging or anything, but I see a lot of people do van life and they put in this, they, they make the thing look like a log cabin. It's got like wood floors and wood walls and wood plank ceiling. I don't, I don't get the wood cabin inside a van thing. I prefer this cool industrial look. So I went with some just Rust-Oleum, got a can of oil-based silver. It's gonna give it a little bit different look. And when you just glance at it, you may not even notice that it's wood. Uh, I just think it's gonna look good. So we're waiting for this to dry. We're gonna put the hinge on it, put that in there and put the mattress in. Um, and that's what we're gonna do. I may have some custom fitted sheets made just for this, this uh, place that I went. You can order a mattress in any size you want for bunks, for truckers, for cribs, for whatever. And they let you pick the size in all dimensions. That's why it was expensive. But hey, listen, like I said, I, I'm not poor. We're not doing this because I need to live in a van because I lost my job. I'm doing this because I don't like to have to stop at hotels. Pisses me off. I'd like to be able to use my own toilet that nobody else has been using, use my own food preparation that nobody else has been using. And I'm not like a germaphobe, but in today's world, you're better off staying inside an ambulance with a HEPA filter uh, system inside than you are going into a hotel in the middle of West Texas. Trust me. <clears throat> it's kind of a mess right now because we just got it sitting in here. But this is the little uh, Magic Chef fridge that I got. We actually reversed the doors. I don't, a lot of people didn't know you could do that. You can, re you can have the doors open and close in any direction you want. And I wanted to be able to access from this direction. So we're just going to mount this where that seat goes. This is a little trash can I picked up from Ikea. Again, sticking with the industrial theme. It looks like a medical kind of a trash can. And it was only like seven bucks. Great, great stuff at Ikea. So anyway, we're kind of using it for a table right now. But uh, this is gonna be the fridge that we're gonna put in there. Really, this was too big. I really didn't want one that, that was this big. And I know a lot of people use the, the coolers with the top lid and everything. But 
I don't think that those are that great of value depending, well it depends on what you're using it for, but those things are like 600 bucks for this little small cooler. This thing was 150 bucks at Home Depot. And the reason I wanted this particular one is I wanted to have a separate freezer section because I'm mostly gonna have frozen food in there. You wanna have hot pockets, TV dinners, and those other little mini fridges with the little cutout thing, those things don't keep anything frozen. I want to be able to keep my food frozen in there and make myself a nice little TV dinner, keep some sodas in there. Like I said, you know, have yourself uh, a spaghetti and meatballs or a hot pocket, put it in the microwave, a cup of soup, whatever. I only need to make it a day and then I'll be back at my shop. In between film and shots, this got delivered by FedEx. This is the black tank that I ordered and it's black. That's actually a little smaller than I thought it was gonna be because I was looking at how it fits in here. And uh, it does fit in here. And there's tons and tons of room left over. But what I couldn't tell from the photos is that it's designed to be slanted like that. And my original plan was to mount it under the box. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that anyway because I really didn't want it inside the vehicle at all. Even though when we cut this hole to put the toilet in, or I don't know if I'm even going to have to cut the hole, maybe not, but um, just depends on how we do it. Now, in my Prevo bus that I have, I have a uh, marine style macerator toilet, which means it basically has a garbage disposal built into it and it's electrically flushed. So when you press the button, it opens up a valve that dumps water and then a little impeller grinds up your stuff, turns it into an instant soup, which is much better than the way most RVs just dump your stuff in one piece right in there. And then literally there's just a turd in this box. <laughs> but using the macerator, uh, it turns it into a nice uh, liquid soup. <laughs> but it does make it easier uh, for disposing of it. And once you put the chemicals in there, really it's just, it's just a, you know, it's depending on the color of the chemical, green or purple, just turns it into a, a, a soup, depending on how much water you put in there. And so that when you go to dump it, uh, it dumps a lot easier and you don't have bits of toilet paper and solid matter and things like that. So I may put in the electrically flushing macerator toilet. The problem is they're like pretty expensive. They're about 10 times more than the regular, you know, you buy like a regular toilet for hundred bucks, 200 bucks. Macerator toilet is gonna be a thousand bucks, you know? But I'm not doing the budget baller version uh, or, or, you know, I, I want to do everything really awesome on this. I want it to be Rolls Royce. So we're probably going to have to mount this thing up under there, which means I'm going to have to probably tack weld some C-channel or something so that this will slide under there and then we'll put a pin to hold it in place or something. Um, we'll figure it out. So this is my old steering wheel. One of the parts I got for free with this truck was a brand new leather wrapped steering wheel. And even though this steering wheel was probably just fine, all the letters were rubbed off and everything. And since I had a free steering wheel, look at that thing, it's beautiful. Brand new steering wheel. Got Mike, the mechanic, he was big in the 80s. <laughs> I'm sure, am I the first one to give you that joke? We'll let our older- First one to give a joke about what? Mike and the mechanics. Oh. Yeah, mechanic Mike. Anyway, so got this extra steering wheel, somebody might want that. It's still good. Because actually these modules can be replaced separately. So you could still use the steering wheel and, and just change that module. There's nothing wrong with the module, it's just the you know words are written are off of it. Wow, that's a I don't know how much that steering wheel is worth, but I got it free with the truck and we installed it really quickly. Or by we I mean Mike <laughs> installed it really quickly. Mike just had a really good idea. He told me this uh, floor is just a thin layer of aluminum. Being aluminum, be difficult to weld. I mean, we could weld aluminum, but aluminum is much harder to weld. So if we were to put some C-channel in there, we'd have to rivet it in there and everything. But he had a great idea. He said, you know, this thing has a lip on it. All we'd have to really do is just cut a hole here, since that box is totally empty, there's nothing under there. And then this would just drop into place, into that hole. And it would just sit down in there almost flush. It'd only be raised a little bit. And I could still put the raised floor in there and that'll give me space in there just for whatever I want to put in there. I could put additional storage or whatever because I'll still be able to access this from the outside, which as I talked about in my previous video, it'd be pretty embarrassing if you were in here going to the bathroom and somebody opened the door. 
excuse me, somebody's in here. So I'll probably kind of disable this door. I might even put like a permanent latch on it or something that locks. So, um, but no, you know, nobody's gonna walk by and just open this door while you're in there. <laughs> like, <laughs> hello, anybody in there? <laughs> All right, I figure that's a good enough introduction uh, for today, just to kind of get your your beaks wet, get your appetite going uh, for what we're going to be doing. Sorry if you thought this was sort of a, I don't know, a boring video with a bunch of what we're going to do stuff. But uh, just make sure to subscribe and get onto this playlist so that you can watch the progress. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff to this thing over the coming months. And uh, I'm interested to hear your experience some of your comments down in the comment section below. Tell me about maybe how you've run water, how you've done heat, air conditioning, and all those other things. Post link to other videos. I've been watching these videos for the last couple of weeks trying to learn about all these things. I started off my career in custom fabrication building mobile production video vans. Used to uh, build like, you know, news vans uh, for news organizations. And that's what I started doing over 20 years ago. Then we started doing custom cars. So this is sort of in my wheelhouse. This is something I've done before, not necessarily doing campers. Uh, normally we're doing electronics, but in the end it's all the same. And I think this is gonna be one of the coolest stealth camper vans, van lives out there. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned. Hey, well, thanks for watching on Video Bob. Mm -hmm.